Okay, a rather heavy column is up on a stand. Thing weighs over 200 pounds. We're going to be checking, looking at the ways, seeing if they are flat, seeing if they are parallel, and then if needed, work on them a little bit. First thing I'm going to do is to take a straight edge and lay it on each of the ways. Uh, I have here a uh, straight edge that I bought a number of years ago. It says it's American made. It says it's precision. I believe it's 24 inches long. Um, so what we want to do first is to find out whether there's any big waves on these ways. In addition to the straight edge, I have a one and a half thousandths feeler. That's the thinnest feeler I have, and it will give us an idea of whether there are any uh, big lumps or, as I said, waves uh, on these waves. Now, the straight edge isn't quite the length of, uh, of the entire column, but for our purposes, it'll be fine. Here, I'm, I'm testing to see if there are any places along there where this one and a half thousand feeler will fit. So far, nothing. Again, on the other side, filling along various places, no place where the feeler even begins to, to fit. So, um, the, the, my worst fears uh, for this uh, piece of tooling is that uh, it was very poorly machined and that is not the case. This next test will tell us to some degree whether the two ways are parallel to each other. I have a feeler gauge here on a stand. I'll run the stand along one way. The feeler gauge will detect the other side and give us an idea whether these two ways are in fact parallel. Now the gauge may bounce around a little bit because I can see that the tooling marks, uh, the marks left by the milling machine that made this surface um, in places are quite deep. So it will not surprise me to see that this gauge bounce around a few thousandths. But the important thing is, does it basically, from one end to the other, stay approximately the same? And we see just about what I expected. The needle does do some bouncing around, but overall the two, the, the two ways are very much parallel. The next test is going to be to determine whether the V's on top of the, on the waves are parallel to each other along the length. Um, I have in my hand uh, a couple of precision ground half inch pins. Um, I place those on either side of the V's and measure across. Now it doesn't matter much what the absolute number is. I'm going to take a starrett caliper, digital caliper, and measure across there, and uh, making sure that I get uh, very much perpendicular to the waves, and uh, we can tell that by putting a little pressure on there and just jogging around a little bit to see what the lowest number is. Um, and then if you take your hands off, 
and it stays that lowest number, you know you, you weren't springing anything out of position. So we move it along the ways, uh, and I was getting uh, almost exactly the same number uh, as I went along. Uh, this steric gauge reads to a half thousandth, and uh, I, so I could tell that uh, even without spending an extraordinary amount of time with it, I was getting the same reading all along the length. So uh, that's, that makes me very happy also. Next I'd like to blue these ways and uh, use a homemade scraper to take down some very high spots. Um, I don't want to make these absolutely flat. That would require taking off quite a bit of metal. I just want to knock off some of the high spots with a homemade scraper. Um, this scraper has a solid carbide brazed onto uh, steel. It's made in two pieces. I made it that way so I could change the tip if I want to, change the configuration. So far this is the only one that I've used. Uh, it's ground uh, with uh, a slight radius to it and the uh, cutting edge is ground to 95 degrees uh, oblique angle. You can see there I'm pointing to the radius to which the tool is ground. Now, uh, bluing is not terribly hard to get off your hands. A little acetone will do it. But uh, if you get it under your fingernails, it's uh, liable to stay there a few days. It's liable to be a little stubborn. So uh, I usually start out with uh, rubber gloves. Sometimes they stay on. Sometimes I get a hole in them and uh, turn them back off and get a blue fingernail or two. Uh, this is Prussian Blue. You can buy it in any art store. Uh, I put a few dabs along the ways. And then I take toilet tissue, wad up a little piece, and start to spread it on. Uh, you want a fairly thin coat on there. Uh, if you can see any streaks from where you're wiping it on, then you probably have it on too thick. It should just be a light, thin blue. I don't know if you can see it very well in this picture, but uh, Rub it out and uh, they sell special tools for this, but the uh, toilet tissue works just fine. They've had all kinds of expensive rollers you can buy to do the same job. Now this is a precision level that I bought years ago. It's very, very accurate. And in order for it to be very accurate, the bottom of it must be very, very flat. Uh, it's hard to see in this picture, but the bottom of this has been scraped uh, against a master uh, surface plate. And I would think that it is accurate, certain to, certainly to within one ten thousandths of an inch. Um, it's 15 inches long and it's about an inch and a half wide. So I'll, I'll rub that on the blued surfaces and the places on the blued surface that then look shiny, more, more metallic color 
then the bluing are the high spots. So that, that, this has nothing to do with it being a level, only has to do with it being uh, the most perfectly flat metal surface that I have in order to do this job. It also is not the perfect thing. It would be nice if I had one that fit right back into the ways, but uh, this, here I'm pointing to some of the shiny spots. And what I'll do is then take the scraper and remove those shiny spots. Then you take some acetone, uh, wipe the bluing off, and do the whole process again. Uh, until you get what you feel is a satisfactory surface. I worked on the ways a couple hours using the base of the level and then the saddle that you see here uh, I also used in the same manner. There's a was in my mind early on that um, this gib was too thick. However, after cleaning everything up and doing a little bit of scraping on the ways, um, it does not appear to be an incorrect size. It is correct. Now this gib is tapered and uh, making it thinner would have been quite a job. I would have had to set up a magnetic table on an angle matching the angle of the gib and then um, I would have had to grind just a tiny little bit off of it which could be done uh, but of course I'm always taking a chance that I'm going to ruin a piece so I'm much happier to find that it fits um, the way it's supposed to. I'm happy with the results. Uh, the saddle slides easily and with uh, equal resistance over the length of its travel. This will be, of course, the z-axis of the machine and uh, final adjustments can be made at the time uh, that everything is assembled, when the head is on and the lead screw is, the uh, ball screw is attached. It's smooth, very smooth. Nice, smooth action from one end to the other, no sticky spots, it's going to run nice.